name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. In the epistle lesson for today, St. Paul is writing to the Ephesians about the sins which he details, and he only details them somewhat. He goes into more of an, of an explicit list than we would even be comfortable with going through perhaps here. And yet then he says that he is ashamed even to mention them in greater detail. But he says, these are the things that we've left behind and that we want to live in the light, in Christ, filled with Christ, and to live a new life in the gospel, which we have heard this morning. Our Lord <coughs> talks about how when a man has been possessed, and this is dealt with over and over again throughout Lent, so it's all through the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, when a man has been possessed by a demon, and the demon leaves or is driven out, the demon will go through desolate places <coughs> and will gather other influences, other demons, and come back to them at that man's soul and that man's body and will find it swept and put in order, and all of them will inhabit that man, and his last state will be worse than first. The point here being that when we leave behind sin, it has to be replaced with something else. It has to be replaced with a disciplined life placed with the presence of Christ, with a spiritual discipline of daily prayer, daily reading of the scriptures, attendance at divine liturgy, and opening ourselves constantly to God and confessing our sins, or else we are even more open to the influence of evil than we had been before. And so this is a sobering lesson, but one that we would expect to have during Lent. Now, we have many lessons that we hear during a particular Sunday. Only some of them are during the Divine Liturgy, and indeed, Matins also contains lessons that, that we hear. And the Old Testament lesson from Genesis this morning is, pertains to Joseph and Jacob. Not all families love each other. Not all brothers and sisters love each other. It's beautiful to see when they do. But Joseph was not loved by his brothers. His parents sent his brothers out to care for the, the sheep, to do the work, but he was a favorite. And so they kept him back. And they made for him the coat of many colors. You know this account. You've read this. You've heard this before. You may have even seen it on the stage or in a movie. And his brothers, they hated him for this, not just because he had a, a nice clothes, but because his parents were always not sending him out to work, but sending him out to check on them to see if they were working and to see what they were doing. So you might imagine that would be a little bit irritating for them. And so 
one of the times that they sent him out to, to check on his brothers. And he came out to see what they were doing because his parents made him do it and made him wear his coat of many colors. They said one to another, well, here he comes. We can see him a mile away with that coat on. Let's kill him. That's an amazing thing to hear in Scripture. From those who are the ancestors of God's chosen people, the Israelites. Let's kill him. And so the solution to not doing so was to sell him into slavery. And so they did, and he became a slave in Egypt and a servant of Potiphar. And you remember this account that he was serving Potiphar, whose, whose wife had designs on him, and she wanted him to spend more time in an appropriate time than was well, appropriate. And so she called him to be with her and he would not. She grabbed hold of his shirt and he fled and she called the guards and she claimed that he had tried to force himself on her. And her husband was apparently used to this kind of behavior from her. That's the reason that that would account for why he did not have him put to death, for he could have done that. But instead, he had him imprisoned. Now, his life had gone from, from difficult or irritating to bad to worse in prison. And now that he is in prison, he is there, and not going into a lot of detail because I assume that you know it and and you have and can can we can read it together another time. But he is given the opportunity to interpret Pharaoh's dream that is troubling him so much that the Pharaoh cannot understand. It has to do with fat cattle and skinny cattle. Interpreting that stream, he rises to be, he is given the opportunity by the Pharaoh to be second in command in Egypt. Because he understands that this dream, not by his own power, but by the power of God, he interprets this dream that it is about the years of plenty that are coming to be followed by the years of famine. And he knows what to do to prepare for this. And so it's placed second in command. He has a plan for how to deal with this. And because of this plan, his family, comes to Egypt, and their lives are saved from starvation. His family, who sold him into slavery, their lives are saved from starvation. And so, this morning, in the lesson at Matins, his brothers, after they bury their father Jacob and have mourned him, they think about their brother Joseph and they realize he may be out to get us now. We really did him bad. What is he going to do to us? And so they come to him and they concoct this story that Jacob had told him, told them before he died that he was to forgive them and not to hold it against them, but it was all made up. And Joseph, understanding, said to them, Fear not, I will nourish you and your little one. 
things. You thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to save many people alive. You thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. Now this isn't just about the evil things that people do deliberately against each other, but about the evil things that we suffer in this world, that God will bring good out of it. And if we trust in him, and follow him and open ourselves to him and seek to be filled with his grace through a discipline of, that's never a fun word, is it? Discipline. That just means not being all over the place. Just doing things consistently in our prayers and coming to church and receiving the sacraments and forgiving one another and loving one another. And so discipline of opening ourselves to God and praying and loving one another. And if we do this, then God will use the evil things in our lives for good. Because he intends not only good for us in this life, but eternal joy, eternal union with in Christ, who has joined our nature to his, who died for our salvation, rose again from the dead, trampling down death by death, to whom be glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit unto ages of ages. Amen.